This is Dean on the scene here with the Rogers View, and we are here at the DC premiere of The Last Man on the Moon. And here we have Captain Eugene Cernan, commander of the Apollo 17 and The Last Man on the Moon. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm way in over my head right now, and I can't believe the response to this, uh, this film. It's gratifying. And the intent of my fi uh, the, the film, basically, it, it, it's not about me. It's about the story of a kid from any town USA with a dream who ended up walking on the moon. How's that? Absolutely, it's definitely good. So how did you get involved with the Apollo program? Well, I was, I'm a naval aviator, and uh, I didn't apply. But way back in uh, Alan Shepard and John Glenn days, uh, NASA came out requesting applications for new astronauts. I didn't apply because I didn't meet all the requirements. Didn't have enough jet time, I hadn't gone to test pilot school. And wouldn't there shortly thereafter that uh, the Navy came and said, we want to recommend you to NASA. And, uh, you know, my golly, uh, part of that, part of the selection process was going to Houston. I was in a room with 400 of the finest aviators America has to offer, and me. And I kept wondering, why me? Why am I here? And that's what I try and tell kids. Never count yourself out. Being an underdog is not bad. And I ended up, you know, pretty lucky fate. F-A-T-E played a big role in uh, how I got to this chair right now. Absolutely. One of the last few moments I saw of your mission was that you left your daughter's initials on the lunar surface. How did that come about? It was just an afterthought. I had parked a lunar rover behind the uh, lunar lander so we could get a television. The ground automatically controlled the television so they could see a picture of it. And I, just, I was just walking away and I said it. I don't know what possessed me. I just, you know, something said, write her initials in her. And people always know, always ask me, how long will they be there? As long as the flag will be there. Forever, however long forever is. And I don't know, I, I don't know how long that may be, but they'll, they'll be there until somebody else comes back and takes a look at them and erases them or something. Speaking of which, it's been over 40 years since we've been to the moon. Why haven't we been back? Oh, man, I ask that question all the time. Forty-three years ago, as a matter of fact, last December. And it's, it's really discouraging. Think about this. Over four decades, this country put a human being on the moon. And today, we can't even get to our own space station without paying the Russians $70 million. Now, to me, that's unacceptable. That ought to be unacceptable to every American that's walking the streets and the cities of this country. Unacceptable. But... Here we are. Fortunately, we got some people with a little vision and we're building some hardware that is going to take us back out there somewhere. Undefined yet, but at least we'll have, we'll have the transportation when the time comes. How did you feel when they wanted to do a documentary about you? What was your initial reaction? About this film? Yes. I figured, I figured uh, uh, Mark Craig, the director, had that. he read my book became passionate because my book is very personal. It takes me everywhere I've been. It takes you for a walk in space. I went to the moon a couple times, stand on the moon with me. The movie is different. It's other people talking about my life. And he said, we got, we got to tell young kids 10, 20 years down the line of what it's like and, and the challenges you faced and the passion I had to become a naval aviator. That's where it all started. And uh, it was like he was like he was trying to sell me a piece of uh, swampland in the desert or something. <laughs> you know, I've been there and done that. It took him about two years, and he found uh, uh, Mark Stewart yeah. as a director, read the book, loved it. They talked me into letting them go ahead with the filming. I was still reticent. I was still, who's going to care about a book about me? Right. And then one day, uh, a, a pretty good friend who knows a lot about the movie business, I told him a little bit about it, you know, a young kid, uh, uh, Chicago born and he said gee that young kid could have been anybody anybody last decade last century or anybody in the decades to come it's not about you it's about the story and he jumped on it and he said it's it's the story that you've got to support so it's available to young kids and so far the response from people all over the country where we've had film festivals and so forth has uh, has heard that message I want the young kids, I want your kid, their grandkids, your grandkids to get that story. That's, that's what this movie is really all about. Absolutely. One last question. You spent three days on the moon. Yes, if you had one more day to spend on the moon, what would you do? 
Oh, uh, you know, when you come back, you never want to leave. We had to leave. We didn't have enough consumables, oxygen, or whatever. I think I made a list. I don't remember exactly now of all those things. I wish I would have. You know, you, 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 you've been somewhere. I wish I would have. I wish I would have taken a picture. I would have done this. I, uh, a lot of things I wish I would have said. We had the lunar rover that we had a lot of access to go in a lot of places. I wouldn't. When I started up the ladder, I looked down at those last footprints. I knew I wasn't coming this way again. Somebody would, and somebody will. You can take the word last out of last man on the moon because we are going back. And there's kids out there. If we give them the opportunity, if we give them the inspiration that I hope this movie provides, they're the ones that are going to take us not only back to the moon, you're young enough, young man, to see us go to Mars. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Thank you. Captain Cernan. Thank you.